Stop wasting my time and hit the damn buy now already. All right, all right, all right, all right. I'm hitting the buy now. Hello, and welcome to another Kyle Connor YouTube channel video. You join me on my couch where I am hovering over the buy now button on an eBay auction for the cheapest electric car in the country. That's right. I am thinking about buying a Nissan Leaf. And this one is significantly cheaper than any other on the market. I've sort of been eyeing to do a cheap EV video. There's also a fun thing I want to do with this car, but I've FaceTimed my dad to ask for his advice because we're sort of in that like, holy smokes, found a deal. What's the best way to go about this? And I thought I'd bring you guys along for the journey of maybe, hopefully, buying and the cheapest electric car for sale in America right now. I said, what's the cheapest EV in America? And what did you say? I don't really remember. I think it was like seven grand or something like that. No, you couldn't even, you, everyone was saying you couldn't like, it's hard to find one under 20 grand, right? Well, now. no. So you can buy a Leaf for 7,000, 7,000, seven. So Leafs bottom out right now at about $7,000. That's where, this is Auto Tempest, by the way, uh, which is a great site for searching for uh, used vehicles because it compiles them from a whole bunch of different sites. And then all the way at the top, you get this Nissan Leaf for $3,750. Like, what is this guy thinking? And then, and, go ahead, Dad. No, I just, I don't, I had one question for you before. Yeah. Does it run? Yes, I'll explain that because it doesn't run as designed. But I mean, it goes down the road, it's got four wheels, it's got brakes, it's got an electric motor, it's got a battery. Yes, sort of. So it's got 70% of the original battery because the guy who owns it must be a nerd like us because he's got Leaf Spy here. So he's showing us the, this is basically the voltage spread across all the different pack modules. It's also, this is the key one, at about 66% state of health. So it's degraded about 35%, which isn't bad for an early 2012 Leaf. That's about where most of them are coming in at. The car's got 77,000 miles. But then you come here to this major issue on the auto check report, which is if I pull up the full vehicle history report, which it's doing right now, you'll see its auto check score is like nah, really bad. And we can go here to show you this. It says it's been reported as an insurance total loss. <laughs> total loss yeah the car was totaled can you, out can you even register it you can yes or i mean if you can't then uh, we'll still drive it so what but does it have a salvage title uh, yes what does that mean total loss yeah probably a salvage title but it's not a like um uh parts only title so it should be able to be titled but we probably won't be able to get vehicle insurance for it. But who cares? Things only three or four grand but we will be well, able to have liability you'll have liability yeah we'll have liability on it yes Okay, so, so here's my assessment, and then I don't know why you're wasting my time and even going through this if it's twenty thirty eight hundred dollars and everything else is seven grand. Well, I haven't explained the it. full the whole the full situation yet. No, no, I understand, but what I'm saying is that if someone is looking to buy a car, right, and and they want to have transportation, reliable transportation, this is not for them. Oh. Yeah, I can see your screen. Kyle, all I was saying is that if you think about it, it whether it's $3,800 or, or you know $2,800, if someone's looking to buy a car on a budget, they want something that's not going to be a headache. They want something that they can get in and drive from point A to point B. You have a special, if I'm not mistaken, you've got a special use case going here where there's probably not a lot of people that are looking to buy this car. So what, what is it that you're planning on doing with it? Tell me about that. Well, I don't really want to release my plans for this car yet, which I'm going to share. Maybe people can guess in the comments why I want an old crappy Nissan Leaf. But here's the thing. The car doesn't look that crappy. It doesn't look half bad. Take a look at this thing. Red. Hell yeah. My least favorite your, color. Your, fa your favorite color. I know. <laughs> but look, it's got the included charger cable bag with it. Okay. Really nice. Couple little stains on the seat. Nothing major. Ellie's falling asleep just thinking about it. And uh, look, he's got the penny out measuring tread depth. Oh yeah. This guy, this guy's the real deal. But, but like here's, it. here's the situation at the moment. This right here is why the car is inexpensive and why I believe it was totaled out. I believe he bought it 
after the crash and just drove it like this for the last three years since 2018. 24 years. Yeah. Okay. So the, the only question is, is this in addition to the, like, did this happen after the original accident or is this the original accident damage? Also, it doesn't really matter. I don't know. You can see the seats have been vacuumed. Very nice, very good looking seats. The interior looks nice. The front end, pretty good alignment. Everything looks somewhat reasonably put together. And then he's got all the nerd data on it. So like the car itself, from a technical standpoint, seems pretty good. When you read his description on the car, which I'm trying to find uh, here, you can see here he says, a 2012 Nissan Leaf for sale, runs and drives great, needs a new onboard charge controller, maybe he means onboard charger, will not charge on level one and two, will charge on DC charging, so it will only DC fast charge, has been in an accident shown in pictures, there's no frame damage, drives straight, and has newer tires. Buyer is responsible for shipping or pickup, that's fine, we can tow it back with the Rivian, and comes with a level one charger, which isn't helpful because it doesn't charge, and a dongle to hook up to Leaf Spy. That's nice. Has tint on the windows, no flaws. So did he just say no flaws and then show a picture of the half the car dented in? <laughs> well, I mean, define flaw, Kyle. You know right, I mean? that's like, an enhancement. That's, that. you know, that you throw a sticker on that, it'll probably make it go faster. Right. Course. But, you know, Kyle, you know what you should do? You should take the VIN and put it in Carvana and Vroom and see how much they give you and now you know how much capital you're putting at risk. Oh, that's actually a really good point. So let's do that you here. You seem surprised think that. that that was a good point. Come on. Give me okay. Let, I, I think that's a great idea. So let's Thank go you. sell, Thank trade, VIN, boom, get my offer. It's going to be like $850. Now, be honest about this car. I'm going to say it's in mint condition other than it's no, been totaled. no, no, no. no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Mileage seventy eight thousand. Let's just put he put seventy seven eight oh five two five where I live. Color racing red. Hey Kyle, you know one of the things they don't ask as with EVs because I put a lot of these in. They don't yeah. ask you if it doesn't charge on AC. This thing's <laughs> I've got. I've never seen that question. Premium wheels. Uh, it's been in one accident, not repaired. Cost to repair. I don't know. Looked like three thousand dollars. Drivable. Mechanical issues. Uh, you, should be on, you should be honest and say, and say at the engine, end. Engine, air conditioning, tires. There's no mechanical issues with no it. No mechanical issues, but at the end, there's room for oh, where you can put in other. Yeah, I can put in an electrical issue, actually. And I'll just say OBC dead. Exterior damage. No, don't don't say OBC did. Say only charges on Chatamo. I'll just say DC fast charges only. Right, that I like because that's a positive. That that's right. It's 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 a good thing. Um, I would say that's a dent. <laughs> yeah. <that's a> dent. <laughs> um, the interior looks great. No modifications yet. Not smoked in. I'm assuming. I'm assuming just one key. Uh, overall condition kind of rough. And you can email me at kyle at outspecstudios.com. Creating your offer. Let's see what it's... $6,000. Your offer's ready. Oh, my God. <laughs> Did you see it? Did you see it? I saw it. That's not very good. <laughs> so we're putting it all at risk here. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, you're, you're not... That's not a good hedge. That, well, at the end of the oh, day... Wait, wait. Kyle. There's always room. Go to room real fast. I want to see. Mm. You got to play these off each other. See, Carvana's smart. They're trying to steal the car away from you. Okay. What's my car worth? $300. They, oh, Vroom doesn't purchase leased vehicles. Wait, this is a leased vehicle? No, I just didn't, didn't know that. Oh, yeah. No, they, they don't. Okay, clean lemon, rebuilt salvage, no loan. It has been an accident. Okay, interior condition. I'd say above average for 78,000. Seats, cloths. I'm assuming it hasn't been smoked in. Most leaf owners are pretty kind to their environment. I would say exterior conditions below average. No rust. Yes, dents. One giant dent. 
no hail damage, no paint chipping, no scratches, I'm assuming. Miles, let's just put 10 to 20K on the tires. We're not totally sure. Uh, no, no aftermarket exhaust, right, Dad? Not that we're aware. I'd say above average mechanical condition because most Leafs degrade more. And I'll put my name. Well, he said it runs. I mean, Kyle you know. Connor, email Kyle at Aspect Studios. Kyle at OutofSpecStudios.com. Did you put in the only DC fast charges on Froome, or did they not ask? Um, I think we're going to leave that one out of this because I'm not actually... I don't think actually... the computer algorithm understands that. Get my price. Oh, uh, they have no idea. Anyway, uh, it doesn't really matter because wanna... this is a keeper. If we get this car, we're never selling it. Hmm. I've heard that before. Right. And I typically do keep my cars. Yeah. Well. Yep. You do? When's the last time yeah, I sold yeah, a car? I would say you do much more than I do. Yeah, I don't really... I, it's easy to buy. It's hard to sell, so I don't sell them. Are you still there? Yeah, I'm here. So okay. it's time It's time to make a decision whether or not I should buy this Nissan Leaf. So I put in an offer about 10 minutes ago of $2,800 on the car. I haven't heard back. I also contacted the seller and haven't heard back from Jake, who's selling the car. I don't think he's from State Farm because I'm pretty sure he bought it out from the insurance auction. So here's the deal. Dad, there's another offer in on the vehicle. Are we gonna risk losing the cheapest Nissan Leaf by about $3,000 over $950? What do you think? I think we, we best not let our emotions get the best of us. I'd like to take a step back and see what else is out there. The next cheapest car. Yeah, in America. easy. I've done that. Okay, tell me what it is. I, because Let's... of Auto Tempest here, not sponsored yet. But the next cheapest car is a <laughs> is a four thousand dollar Rav Four electric with a dead battery. So that's not a running car. The next one is a Mitsubishi i Meve. It's a sport for five thousand dollars. And then the next Leaf is sixty five ninety nine. And that one's been totaled as well. I would hit the buy now. That's what I would do. Okay. So are we buying this thing? Can I explain why? See, the thing is, if I were selling the car and I put it out there, how much time is there between now and the end of the auction? Um, three days. All right. And... And are these blind bids that you've put in or can you see what the other person has, has offered? No, they're blind because it's a buy it now or best offer situation. Okay, so what's gonna happen is, do you have the patience to wait three days to find out whether or not you're gonna buy this car or not? No, I'll forget about it in an hour. So, so the options are you either hit the buy now or you forget about it and maybe you get lucky and maybe you buy the car for 2800 Right. And I would just hit the buy now. Okay. I'm going to hit the buy now then on the leaf. So you think that's the move? It's not my money. I don't care. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> you don't care. I mean, I guess. <laughs> oh, wait. Vroom coming in hot. Guess what they just gave me? Oh, wait. You can actually see it. 400. 400 bucks from Vroom. Just got the email. That's. 33% higher. We're talking we're talking big numbers now. Big numbers. That's right. Maybe we should just sell it to them as a joke and say good luck charging the thing. Mm. No. What's the buy now price? The buy now price is 3750. Okay, so 3350. How much how much do you think you could salvage parts for this? Like if you were to take it to a junkyard. I would never do that. You would never do that? No. We'll pay for it by making videos about it. That's our income revenue stream. Welcome to the world of YouTube. We no, make no, one I... video on this thing, and then we're done. <laughs> so It's not like a Model S Plaid that we got to make a lot of videos on to pay for it. This is like, let's just make one stupid video. All right. So let's, let's, how about just stop wasting my time and hit the damn buy now? Or all right. All right. All right. All right. I'm hitting the buy now. Buy now. All of my cards are expired wait, wait, wait. in PayPal. Are you using my account? 
No. Actually, that'd be kind of funny. What's your login? I'll pay no, for it no, with yours. No, no. <laughs> I don't want my rating to go down. Are you <laughs> well, I guess I got to take the Rivian out to Washington to get this thing. Or should I road trip it back? That would be fun. That would be really fun. How much range does that car have, do you think? Don't know. Well, what did it have new? Don't know. <laughs> you, of all people, don't know? I really don't know. 2012 Leaf range. It's got 66% of whatever it says, EPA. 73 miles. That's not bad. So it's going to have like 40 miles. Are you going to make the smart car jealous? Uh, the smart car will still go farther. Okay. All right, I'm going to buy it. Give me a second. Yeah. All right, it's time. I've put in my card info. Confirm and pay. I'm buying the cheapest electric car for sale in the country right now. The lights are about to dim. With yeah. Action. Your order's in. No, wait. Does your order in mean that you bought the car, or does that mean he has to actually approve it? Well, I just paid him full asking price. Why wouldn't he approve it? I don't know. Well, at least the offer's in. All right. Well, listen. You better do something fun with this car because you're, you, you know, I, I want, I want some quality videos out of this. Car. We're gonna do a tug of war with the Rivian. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> just drag this you thing know? at eighty miles an hour down the runway. Good morning. There's the IX. Here's the e-tron, Rivian. I want to head over to the EA station. I promised you updates until they got this thing in the ground put in because they're ripping out the old units, putting in the new ones. I got, I just spoke to the Leaf owner, got some updates for you. I think we'll take the, uh, take the e-tron over this morning. On our way over to the Electrify America charging station, the e-tron is at about 50% state of charge. Again, our home charging situation still is broken. So we've been using our office charger for the most part. But um, yeah, this thing's got 23,000 miles on it. Holy smokes, we've been driving it more than I expected. Very interesting. This car usually is only used around town. We don't take it on many road trips except for that one big cross country trip. And um, yeah, got, got some updates on a whole bunch of stuff. So let's get going on the road and I'll tell you everything that's happened since last night because I am so pumped about this Nissan Leaf. Now, I know you're probably thinking like, Kyle, I've never heard you say you're going to be pumped about a Nissan Leaf. Uh, <laughs> I never thought I would say that, but I really am. I think it's very important that, or I think I should say, I've been noticing a massive issue in our EV coverage, which is we've been covering the EVs for, to be totally transparent, rich people. We've been doing BMW iX, Tesla Model S Plaid, Lucid Air is coming up. And honestly, that's all great to watch. And I think really fascinating from an educational standpoint to learn where the bleeding edge of automotive is. And that's where I like to live, right? I want to have the best technology in a car, all of these things. That's why I bought a Plaid and that's um, you know why I love that car so much. However, I think we're really missing a part of our point here, which is we should be... Um, we should be including more, more inexpensive EVs because um, not everyone can afford those cars. And honestly, most people can't afford those cars. So let's get into the cheap car world. So I, you guys saw I hit the buy now on the Nissan Leaf last night. And it turns out that the owner called me this morning, had a quick chat, really nice guy, really nice guy. And he goes, Oh, you're Kyle from Out of Spec. I watch all your videos. I'm like, no freaking way. That's awesome. So we have a viewer that we're buying this car from, which is great. Um, and he was like, look, I tried to be as transparent as possible in the article. There's nothing I've hidden. The car's, you know, super clean other than the big dent and it won't AC charge. It's got 65, 66% health on the battery pack. He's like, that gives me about 50 miles of driving in the city, maybe a little bit less on the highway. That's fine for our needs. It's fine for many people's needs. And so uh, I got to figure out a way to go get it. It's up in Washington and I haven't quite thought about how I'm going to pick the car up yet but there we go nissan leaf coming to all of the channels i was like should i road trip this thing back chatamo road trip um, the problem is i think it, with 40 miles of range on the highway i actually think it's not possible i think we would need a bigger battery 
more range. So then the idea was, oh, should we tow charge it behind the Rivian when it runs out? That could be a funny one. Um, so yeah, we got a lot of ideas, but not a lot of time. So the quickest thing to do would just be to blast up there and rent a U-Haul trailer and bring it back. So that way I don't have to tow a trailer all the way out there but we have options. Uh, more updates, winter is coming. Uh, it's currently 67 degrees and it's almost noon. That's not typical for Colorado summertime. So we're getting into the fall. I was driving through the mountains the other day on the way back from California in the IX and it was below freezing. So um, that was time to start thinking about winter tires. Now it's no secret, Nokian is one of our sponsors uh, for out of spec and they always hook us up with winter tires every year. And so I ordered a set of studded Nokian Hakapalita 10 EV tires for this e-tron. So this thing's just gonna be a freaking snowmobile. It's got all the Audi stuff in there, fully height adjustable suspension and studded EV winter tires. I'm a huge fan of these tires because Nokian studded technology is, is the best out there. I'm not, this video is not sponsored. I'm just a, I just love Nokian tires for winter stuff. And um, so a huge fan of that and um, you know, the, this e-tron is going to be an insane car on those. So we're going to do that. It's the same tire I ran on the Model 3 last year. Um, remember when Alyssa had a parking brake failure on our Model 3 and got stranded and ended up flat spotting a tire? Yep. Well, we are actually going to be replacing one of those tires. They're actually still pretty fresh. We only ran them for one season. So the Model 3 will also be on uh, Nokia and Hakapalita 10 EV studded winter tires. I don't want all of my cars to have studded tires because studs aren't perfect for all conditions. They really help in ice, which surprisingly we actually do get quite a bit of here in Colorado, um, especially here in the front range. So, you know, these are cars, Audi, uh, Alyssa's driving the Audi. It's just ultimate safety is the goal there. So just go for the max tire. Uh, the Model 3 is going to be, the team's going to be in and out of that car. Friends are going to be borrowing it. People are going to just be driving it every day, everywhere, especially with the lift kit. It's gonna be a perfect snowmobile. And I just think ultimate safety, let's go studded tires. But studs aren't great, especially in mixed season driving because they're loud, they chew up the roads, they are legal here in Colorado from a certain time frame, So we are able to drive with them. Um, but on the Rivian, I'm also gonna go with Nokian winter tires, but they don't make an EV specific tire in the 22 inch wheel that we have. So Nokian's actually looking into maybe even adapting their EV tire to match what the Rivian sizing is. So that's in progress right now uh, for our 22 inch sport wheels. And I think that's actually a good use case for the big wheels on that truck. I have the 22 inch sport wheels. We're not gonna be doing hardcore wheeling in the winter time because the trails will be covered in snow. And so really, uh, yeah, just get some aggressive snow tires on the 22s, why not? And then when springtime hits, Hopefully then Martian wheels will have their Rivian wheels out. I don't actually know if they will. Evoke convertible, whoa! Okay, it's gonna be a good day. Not as good as a Nissan Murano Cross Cabriolet day, but convertible with the top down in the rain and Evoke, uh, I love that, that's great. Uh, and then, you know, just run, run a, a hardcore tire for uh, uh, wheel and tire package for next season. Right now, you can't even buy Rivian after uh, Rivian wheels and tires uh, like as a set from their gear shop. It's just not available at the moment. So there we go. Um, bought a Nissan Leaf. All the tire, all the cars are getting snow tires except really the Model S, which I probably won't drive on the snowiest days. I think we're going to still try. I'm going to keep that car for a little bit at least and see if it drives right after the accident. The, the damage really isn't as bad as we were expecting. Um, yesterday we dropped the Model 3 off for service and Tesla service has been wonderful in communicating with us. Uh, every few hours they're sending me an update. They had to keep it overnight so it won't be ready uh, until I believe later today or tomorrow, but that should be in tomorrow's video. I'll let you know what goes on with that. And um, yeah, I mean, they, they figured out what was going on with the fan. Basically someone, I guess, had scraped the, the underside of the car and it damaged the just the radiator fan, not the radiator itself. It's only like 900 bucks or $800 to replace the shield and the fan. I'm like, wow, that's not bad. That includes labor. So yeah, we'll have a full wrap up on the Model 3 situation. Model S is waiting for parts, but for now we just need to end this video by checking on the local progress of our EA station, ripping out the old units, putting in the new BTC stuff. One of my friends texted me and told me that they're actually putting in the BTC uh, power cabinets as well. So uh, not the SK Signet cabinets. I don't know which is better or worse. Glad we're just getting new chargers. So let's run over there, check it out and yeah, just love driving this e-tron. So, so pulling in here, 
not off to a good start with the fire trucks everywhere. So that's not good progress. And let's take a look as to what's going on over this way. We got the forklift out. We got all the cabinets removed at the moment. Again, my, I'm not here to bug these guys. I'm not gonna talk to them or ask them anything. Um, man, this Audi looks pretty sick, doesn't it? By the way, speaking of Audi, they uh, sent us a little gift. Someone from their social media team sent us a uh, like a little package for taking this car across the country. I don't think they know like we're reviewers or anything, but they were just like, uh, you know, cool that you drove your e-tron across the country. So here we go. All the ABB cabinets are out. What I've learned is that we should be um, receiving one maybe BTC unit or maybe we'll just keep our Chatamo. Yeah, so we're gonna keep our existing ABB Chatamo station that's in the ground over there. Here, I'll show you. Uh, because they're not replacing the Chatamo at any of these. So you can see everything's out of the ground, doing some drilling, but that one's gonna stay there so that I can charge up my new leaf. And then all of these units here are uh, basically going bye-bye. And then we're putting in the BTC chargers. This is basically what the charger looks like. And then this, what goes in the ground are dispensers. And um, interesting, still no sign of any action going on at that extra spot. So my guess is we're not getting any additional units. They're just gonna put the three dispensers on here and that'll be that. But progress is happening. They got everything removed and looks like they're ready to start pumping in the new chargers tonight. And uh, that's pretty fast, isn't it? So there you guys have it. That's the quick update from our local EA station. I gotta say, progress is moving swiftly. I already know that the station being down is impacting people. I've received a few messages from local viewers who are just like, hey, like I need this station. And I'm like, all right, well, just use PlugShare and find some other local ones. Uh, but uh, I think this is the best thing that could happen to our station, you know, sort of pull it offline, and then shove a new one in there as soon as possible. And they seem to be going pretty quickly considering its construction, which goes slow. I also mentioned in our big video that this was the first one that they have swapped out. It was at least the first one that I've heard of, but my understanding is they had just finished up three or four other ones. And so we are sort of, uh, you know, in the early stages, I still think no coincidence they're doing ours, but uh, I don't think we were the first one to get upgraded but that's okay, doesn't matter. Can't wait to get our station up and running. It's gonna be freaking awesome. And uh, there you have it, the update on the local EA charger situation right there for you as uh, we wrap up the end of this video. So what did we cover in the video? New car, new tires, Audi sent us a gift and chargers are going in. And I think there was something else, but I totally forgot. Let me know if you guys are liking these sort of weird you know, day in the life of Kyle videos. I'm not really a vlogger, <laughs> although I think this is technically vlogging, but uh, yeah, no, I, I can't believe people are watching these things. I was just like, wow, I'm gonna put this up so I don't forget what happens. But no, appreciate y'all watching. And uh, yeah, 2.6 miles per kilowatt hour getting down here in the e-tron. This thing is thirsty and I've been driving it pretty gently, but it is comfortable. Can't wait to see how this thing drives on the studded Nokian tires because they're really soft. You're just not gonna feel a thing in this car. It is gonna be noisier with the tires though. Anyway, let's head out, going back home. That was the update. Drove 15 minutes just to park in a parking lot for five seconds. And I can't wait to try out these new chargers. Thanks for watching. See you on another one soon. Bye-bye.